morning. Welcome to day 37 of the 100 day project. This is day 36. We made ATCs, artist trading cards, if you don't know what an ATC is. Today, after I finish my coffee, we're gonna start a little project. I don't know if I'll finish it today, but Lucinda had asked me in a comment if I would make a toothpaste box doll, or a doll that had a box, and she referenced a toothpaste box. I use little boxes, is what I use. It doesn't have to be toothpaste. But these are made from boxes, and they were made years ago. 2016. And what these are, are little dolls that I cut out haphazardly with little boxes. After I get the initial shapes kind of cut out or drawn, whatever's left, I will create the little flowers and things like that. So that's why they look so funky, other than the fact that that's how I do things. I am surprised I kept these. I got rid of so much of the stuff I made years ago, but I kept these. This one I adhered to cardstock so you could cut her out and hang her, and these I put on a canvas. Let me show you the boxes I've got. There's different sizes, like the toothpaste box here, this uh, chocolate box, which these are yummy. I'll show you those. Uh, cracker boxes, things like that. Oil of Olay, little cookie box. Then they go bigger, like a cracker box back here. You can use cereal boxes and things like that. So I used a couple small boxes, I think is what I did. Probably something like this and probably a toothpaste box to make those over there. So I'm going to go through and grab out what I need. Then I'll show you what else I'm going to use. And the other thing I did with the leftovers of the box is made these little pieces here on these little canvases. They're two and a half by three. So I just used the leftover pieces and made little art pieces with them. And I love these. I still think these are cute. This is my favorite one, I think. I think that's all, yeah. So if we have any leftover pieces, maybe I will find some of these. I think I still have some and we'll make some of these. I don't know. Okay, let me pick out a box or two while I drink my coffee. I'm gonna mull this over. I saved out this oil of a lay box, this cookie box, toothpaste box, and this little toothpaste box. And I was gonna tell you, this chocolate, the Lint Excellence Intense Orange Natural Flavor Dark Chocolate. This is so yummy. If you haven't tried it, you gotta try it. Okay, so I've been looking at the girls here, trying to decide which box I think I wanna work with. And this one here requires a little bit bigger box so that one of those cookie boxes would work. The skinny girls, I might kick it out of a toothpaste box. And I also don't know if I'm gonna put them on the canvas or put them on a piece of paper. So what I have here to work with is a cutting mat and an X-Acto knife. I'm gonna be using a pair of scissors. I don't know that I'll need these, but they're here just in case. I definitely will need scissors. And I have the canvas over here that I actually used for these girls, four by eight, three quarter inch thickness, wood panel. I don't know how I'm gonna paint them, if I'm gonna cover them with scrap paper or painty paper. They're called Little Misfits. <laughs> There's a video on these, and the video is rather long. The video won't be as long today, I don't think. I think I'm gonna challenge myself, and I'm gonna see what I can come up with with this box. The first thing I wanna do, and I'm going from memory here. I should go look at my own video, but I don't really have the time. <laughs> I'm curious what I did. I don't remember. First thing I think I did was I took apart my box because I don't want my box to influence anything other than the pieces, the individual pieces. I don't want the, the full box to be the influence after I get it open. And I get off all the extra paper and stuff like that. After this is open, then I'm gonna take all the creases that the box has, just like we did our bookmarks, if you were here with me for those. And if you weren't, why not? Where you been? <laughs> and I'm gonna tear apart the box. And I'm just gonna tear apart at every little crevice. And I don't know what this will be or if we'll even use it, but it's part of her right now as far as I'm concerned. There's a girl in this box and we're gonna get her out. Okay, so let me take apart the box. Okay, my box is taken apart. And someone's going to say to me, possibly, so I'll, I'll hedge off. Why would you take the box apart completely? Why wouldn't you just leave it like this and then work with the box all in one piece and that way you'd have enough room to make whatever size skirt or bodice or arms or whatever that you wanted? Well, I could, but what is the fun in that? Where is the challenge, I ask you? <laughs> The challenge is for me to take this apart. Now I have these little pieces to work with and I've got to come up with a skirt and a bodice and I've got to come up with arms and legs and a head. We will see what I come up with and that's the challenge. 
to use the little box pieces. After I've got all that apart and you've got all your little extra pieces removed that you don't need, you wanna evaluate your shapes. See if anything jumps out at you that you might could use for something. Like I'm probably thinking that one of these pieces might be her head. You know, it's big enough for a head. So I could think of this as a head. I could think of these as possibly arms. Her legs could come out of here or here. One of these could be a hat. So what I did, if I remember correctly, is I grabbed a pencil and I first drew out my skirt. I'm gonna attach these. I'm gonna draw them individually, then I'm going to attach them. And that's why when they get put together, they don't look all even and perfect because they're made individually. They're not all one piece. She's made up of a lot of things. So good luck to me, right? So I have to decide, do I want my skirt to be long or do I want it to be short? Or do I want to attach two pieces? Like I could make a skirt this way and then make it bigger this way and then attach it here and then put a little ruffle in here so that it looks like it's one piece. I think what I'm gonna do is make her a chunky girl. I don't know why. <laughs> I just think I do. I'm seeing feet. These are shoes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna take this as a guide. I may change my mind. Let's pretend these are her feet for now, or her legs. I'm gonna make her a skirt. Like that. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out. That way it stops me from fretting and thinking, what else can I do, what else can I do? This forces me into my position to work. I can alter this. I don't have to stay with what I originally cut. You can change it. Like if I wanted a more narrow waist, I could come in and cut it like that. And I might do that. And you just keep altering it till you get it where you want it. Okay, this is her skirt so far. Now I have these extra pieces here that came off of this piece. And I have this piece and this piece. So these could be little wings, could be little pigtails. You just never know. Every little piece that you cut off could potentially become something else. This could be her bodice. She could have a lumpy body. <laughs> this could be her head with a cool hairdo. I wanna save these just in case, so we'll start on this one. And I'll just stick it there, like I'm gonna attach these two. I'm gonna start drawing from the skirt edge, where the skirt is, right here and here, the little waist, and then I'll make my shape however I want it. This is the fun of this. You never know what you're gonna get. No matter how hard you try, you're gonna get something funky. And that is so fun to me. Okay, she's not gonna be chunky after all. <laughs> Evidently, I can't do chunky very well. Except in real life. <laughs> I do that really well, off and on. And right now it's on. Just get it to where you're happy. All right, so we have a bodice and we have a skirt and now we need her feet. She could be a ballerina. Those little pieces make her look like a ballerina. <laughs> These here, she's on her tippy toes. And if I did it this way, it looks like she's jumping through the air. How about that? There we go. That's so cute. <laughs> I could make this the waistband. I can make it a belt to cover that seam. We'll wait and see. So I need a head. This might work. So let's put this aside for a minute and bring this back. And I'm gonna stick this other piece down here so that I can connect her head. Now we need arms. What do these pieces look like? I don't know, that's kind of cute, really. I'm very tempted to do that, I'm very tempted. We need hands, though. I feel like I should make her hands pointy because her feet are pointy. Now I need some hair. I want her hair to be kind of flowing out from her body. If I set it on her head, let's see if I can make it work. That's a cute hat. <laughs> All right, this is messing me up. So we're gonna move this to the side. I kind of want it loose like that. So I don't know, we may change her hair. And I could put her hat on right there, actually. We'll think about that. So we'll set this aside for now. What else do we need? We've got lots of leftovers. We could make her a, she's holding a flower or something. Let's just go ahead and do that. This could be the stem. Sometimes if I make more than one girl, I wind up with shapes that I don't have to cut. I already have them. They're sitting right here in front of me. I'm only making one girl, so we're having to make our own shapes. 
And as you cut, you get more shapes that you can turn into other girls' features. Like this. These two I just made could be boots for somebody. <laughs> for example, let me bring in the dress. I'll show you. See? Which? <laughs> be too big a flower for her, but that's kind of cute like that. Maybe we'll go with that and we'll always be able to add more if we need to. So next thing I want to do is I want to paint all my pieces and I think what I'm going to do for her is I'm going to put her on paper. So I'm going to get a piece of cardstock. Keep your scraps nearby because we might need them. Okay, I was looking through my papers to try to find a paper that wasn't too heavy. I didn't want a heavy like 140 pound watercolor or mixed media paper. I found a 90 pound mixed media paper and that would probably be fine. This way I can glue all her pieces to the paper and I can cut it out or take my exacto knife and go around her or I can leave her on the paper and use her for something else. One thing I found while I was looking for my papers is some painty papers. I call them painty papers. It's just papers that I throw excess paint on when I'm done using it my brush. And I had all these papers stuck in this book and I thought, hmm, and this is excess paint. I would just went and then I threw, drew lines with the green and just put black blobs. And I mean, it looks terrible, really, but <laughs> um, I thought maybe, maybe I should use one of these papers to put her down because there's already a background. If I wanted her to have a background, maybe this one. I don't know. You can put her down on a blank sheet of paper though and then make your background or don't have a background at all. I hadn't intended on giving her a background, but when I saw these, I thought maybe she'd be cute on that. I'm gonna keep that in reserve and possibly use it, but if I don't use this, I will be using this paper here. And this is gonna influence the colors I use because I want her to stand out or I'll have to push this back a little bit, which I've done before, so it's no big deal. If I just use a blank piece of paper, then it doesn't really matter. I've given you the concept, I've given you the idea. I'm gonna go off camera and I'm gonna play with these pieces and I'm gonna tweak them until I get them where I want mine. So you do the same for yours. I'm gonna to try to piece mine together, the pieces I really like, just to keep them together. I'm gonna to take a little piece of washi tape and put it on the back. I'll be removing it to paint it, but I want it to stick together right now just so I can test my pieces out. So just use washi tape to kind of keep everything in place until you're satisfied and you know that you're gonna keep those shapes. Okay, as far as I know, there's my girl. <laughs> I've twiddled with her and tweaked her just a little bit. I did cut down the bodice a little bit so that it wouldn't stick so high up on her. I did change her hair. She looks like she's got a little punk rocker hair going on, which I think was gonna be cute. I kept this piece in case I wanted to put it behind here like a ponytail coming up. I changed her arms because I wasn't loving those funky arms, but I did keep her legs. And I kept every little piece except the tiny, tiny ones that I cut out because that's what I used to create these. And then I'm just gonna take paint, choose the colors that you like. What I do is I decide on the color for my bodice and my skirt, and I kind of make them, they don't really have to match, but I make them kind of look like they're gonna match a little bit. I am gonna put some gesso down on mine because I don't want all the color to soak into the box. And I'm just using Liquitex gesso. Okay, all my pieces are gessoed, and I did add a couple of coats because this gesso seeped right into the box, and gesso just serves as a barrier between your box and your paint, and your paint will sit on top easier. If you didn't have the gesso, the paint would soak into your box, and then you'd have to add more to make the color you want. Usually I don't care about that. I'm gonna start painting. I'm gonna give her skirt a couple of coats of different colors. I wanna make her bright and festive and happy. I'm gonna take my bodice and I'm putting a pink on top, but I'm gonna use the rest of my paint here on my brush so I don't waste it. And then I'm gonna let them dry and then I will either add more paint or I'll decorate them. I'll probably decorate her after she's put together because it's kind of hard to do with individual pieces. Okay, I am done painting my first round. Maybe I'll add a little more paint. I might add a little more something to each one, but probably I'll assemble her because I need to have her assembled to really bring her together. I like to get as much done separately as I can though because it just adds to the challenge and the fun. But 
at some point you have to put her together so you can see what she's gonna look like. So let these dry. Okay, my pieces are dry except for the hair. I went and had lunch and when I came back, I thought, you know, I really think I wanna put her on this background that I threw extra paint on. I think she'd look really cool. And I thought her hair will blend in too much with these flowers, so I just put a darker color on her hair as well. So it's drying. It shouldn't take too long though. Okay, so I'm gonna set her out here and I'm gonna see what she looks like and if I like her this way, because I'm pretty sure I will, but you know, you never know. She needs some work for sure. Actually, you know, I don't know. I kind of like that background. Maybe I won't put her on there. I kind of want to keep this for something else. Okay, I don't know why this just doesn't feel like the right time to use this. And I don't know why I love it so much, but I do. So I'm not using that. I am going to go ahead and take a piece of paper out of my book. So I've done that. I'm going to cut off these edges here. And then I've got some papers here that I pulled out of my box of extra papers that I might try on here and see if they will work with her. I've already sampled a few that I've discarded. These are the ones left that I kind of liked. This one here looks like she's running through a forest for some reason, I, I guess because of the green and the little marks here. I kind of like that. Hmm, pretend it's like this size. I think I like this. So I'm gonna try this first, and then if this doesn't work, I may resort to this one. Or we may just go with a blank sheet. This is not gonna cover my sheet of paper completely. I'm gonna find something that I can fill in up here. Okay, I found this piece in my box, and that will work perfectly. I'm gonna get all my piecing done, glue my paper down. Once this is finished, I'm gonna trim off the excess. Okay, I have my background put on my paper. I trimmed it up and I laid my pieces down just haphazardly just to see if I'd like her. I'm still not sure. I think I will but I think I'm gonna to have to tone down the background. We're not done with her. She's gonna to have to be spruced up some. She needs a face. There's a lot more to do to this and I just can't do it today. So I'm gonna stop the video here and we will pick up tomorrow. I think we can get her done tomorrow. All right, I'll see you tomorrow for day 38. Bye-bye.